Don't you just love talking about performance? Isn't it just so great to just take something and make it better, make it faster? Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So we've been on a bit of a performance trend lately. Last time we talked about how we can actually use multi-threading, SCD async, all of that stuff to make our computer do multiple things at the same time. Check out that video if you haven't already because it'll greatly help you speed up your programs if you use it correctly. And in fact, I know that a bunch of questions did arise as a result of that video. I know you guys are interested in that, so don't worry. We're gonna be talking a lot more about this kind of stuff in the future. But today I thought that we would actually just look at a really simple example of what you can do to make your strings faster. When people deal with strings, I don't think they realize just the kind of impact a string has on the performance of your program. A lot of string operations in your program, formatting text, you know, logging stuff, getting into the right format using substring, that kind of stuff is easy to overlook because ah, you know, I'm just playing with a bunch of strings. But no, playing with a bunch of strings is actually bad and it's very slow. And we're just gonna talk about one of the things that we can actually do that's very, very simple that will make our strings and our string operations a lot faster. <sighs> Doesn't it just feel amazing to be learning all of these new things? But where do I learn things other than programming, I hear you ask? Why Skillshare, of course. In fact, I'm pretty sure they have classes on programming as well. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. And the best part is that you get unlimited access to all of these classes if you sign up for a premium membership. The more time I spend programming, the more I long to be creative. As someone who's not that great at drawing, I love how many illustration classes there are on Skillshare that I can check out. They also have a bunch of classes on things like cinematography and what you can do to improve the quality of your videos. In fact, I'm quite impressed with just how many classes they have to offer. There are just so many creative videos on there that I can check out to take a break from programming. Skillshare is offering you guys a two month free trial if you sign up using the link in the description below. And when you do, let me know what your favorite classes are so that I can also check them out. And of course, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to strings. I don't really wanna sit here today and just talk for hours about why strings can be slow and the technicalities behind all of that. I'd much rather just show you guys a practical example of what you can do to make them faster. But if I had to sum up one of the main issues with STD string and probably string formatting, string operations in general, it's that they allocate memory. If you guys aren't familiar with why memory allocation is bad, that's actually a really good topic for a video, by the way, that I definitely wanna make. But I do have a video about the stack versus the heap. Definitely check that out if you want more information about just why allocating on the heap is not the best thing to do. It's not that it's necessarily bad to allocate on the heap, it's inevitable in a lot of cases, in fact. But where you can avoid it, you absolutely should because it can slow down your program. And SCD string and a lot of its functions love to allocate, and that's not ideal. In fact, let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here we have a blank C++ program. What I'm gonna do is write some very simple code. I'm just going to make a string called name. I'm going to type in my full name here, and then I'm going to write a function that's going to print name, right? And what I'll do is I'll, well, I'll take in a const std string by reference. You know, we're not gonna pretend to write slow code here. So I've got a const std string reference, so there shouldn't be any copying of the string going on here. And then what I'll do is I'll simply see out that name string. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna try two different scenarios here. First of all, I'm just gonna print that name just by calling the function like this. Let's see how many allocations we get from this. So how do we track these memory allocations? Well, a very simple way is just to overload the new operator, and then this will just return malloc size, which is basically your basic memory allocation. And then I wanna add some additional things into here to make it a little bit more obvious. So I'll make a uint 32t called s alloc count, which is just gonna be the number of allocations here. I'll just make this static for good practice. And then what I'll do is s, alloc count plus plus whenever we allocate. And then just for curiosity, I'll also print just how big that allocation was. So allocating size bytes. Okay, cool. So now all of our allocations will flow through this new operator. It will count the amount of allocations we actually have. And also it will print just how big that allocation is. And what I'll do at the very bottom here is also just print that alloc count allocations. 
Okay, cool, so there we go. Let's run this program and see what happens. And as you can see here, we've allocated eight bytes of memory and there has in fact been one heap allocation. Now let's take a look at where that's come from. I'll just take a breakpoint over here and run the program again. Here we go, the breakpoint gets hit and you can see that it's coming from this line here. When we actually create a string that causes a heap allocation, if we take a look at where it's coming from, it's coming from uh, std basic string, of course. If we drill down a little bit, we can see that this in fact does allocate memory. Okay, but what if we do something a little bit more simple? What if we just get rid of this string entirely and we just copy and paste this kind of const char data right into the print name function? Does that allocate memory? Yes or no, write a comment below now. I'm gonna run this program and well, as you can see, it does in fact allocate memory. So if we go back here, this in fact does allocate memory. We're still taking in a const reference here, of course, but it still needs to construct an SED string for us and that construction allocates memory. Let's look at a slightly more involved example, I guess, because this is really, really simple. I'll go back to what I had before and what I'll do here is I'll actually just play around with the string a little bit. So maybe I want to have the first name. So I'll just do name.substring zero and three to get the first three characters out and make its own string. I'll do the same for the last name. And then of course, I'll start this at index four with a length of nine. So now I have the first name and the last name. Maybe I just wanna print the first name, I'll do that. Let's uh, run this program and see how many allocations we get. And you guys can write that in the comments and count it yourselves. So how many allocations do you think we have here? The correct answer is three allocations. So already just with a few operations, we're already at three allocations. And you can imagine that things like this might happen all the time throughout your program. And if you've got some kind of real time running program like an app or a game or something like that, and you're doing this kind of stuff every frame, then it can really pile up and it can hurt your frame rate. So is there anything we can do to actually make this better for us? Yes, in fact there is. There's a very easy way that we can just modify this existing code to reduce the allocations to just one. And what we'll do by the end of this video is get rid of all of these allocations will have zero. If we just look at this program, whenever you're optimizing, you just wanna take a look at what it is you're trying to do. Because in a lot of cases, just by kind of looking at the data, you can find ways to optimize it. So for example, what am I doing with this first name? What do I want? Well, really, I just want these three characters. Does obtaining these three characters really require me to make a substring? I mean, what, what that's doing is creating a whole new string, which is its own data, right? So it's copying that data into this first name variable, right? Which is a string. But not only that, if I don't even copy the data, if I just take this obviously like that, that's gonna allocate in itself. And you can see we now have four allocations because what it's doing is creating a whole new string which can be mutated and has its own memory. But really what we want is kind of a view into that string. A view, you say? That's exactly where string view comes into play. So SED string view is a new class available in C++17, but to be honest, I've been using stuff like this way before C++17. What it is, is essentially just a pointer to existing memory. So in other words, a const char pointer to an existing string owned by someone else, plus a size. So what that enables you to do is be like, okay, I've got my name, Jan Chernikov, I can just go to that first, I can have a pointer to that first character and then a size of three, and then that would be my substring. Or I can have a pointer to the beginning of that string plus four bytes, which takes me to that beginning of that surname of that last name, and then another nine for the size, and then that would be my substring. So in other words, what I'm doing is I'm creating like a window, a little view into existing memory. Instead of having to allocate a whole new string and make a whole new string out of it using substring. I don't need any of that because what I want is just a view of a window into an existing string which has its own memory. It's really simple to write this kind of class by yourself. So way before C++17, people were doing stuff like this. It's actually quite common to do. And the huge benefit here is because I'm not creating my own string, I'm just kind of looking into an existing string there is no memory allocations. It's extremely lightweight to pass a string view around just by value because all it is is a pointer and a size. So with that in mind, let's rewrite the current code that we have to just get rid of substring altogether. So here we have these two substrings that we wrote, of course. I'm just gonna rewrite them. What I'll do is write std string view 
first name, and then I can use the constructor of string view to specify this substring. So in other words, I'm gonna go with name because that's where the data is, name.cstring. That gives me a const char pointer that is owned by this name string. And then I'm gonna specify a size of three. And then that, that's that, that's my first name. And then for the last name, I'll do the same thing. Except the difference being, I don't wanna start at the beginning of this string. I actually wanna advance four bytes or four characters forward so that I get to this letter C here and then the length here, which is nine. I'll just wrap this stuff behind an if zero and then I'll write a little else here so that we can test both scenarios uh, later. And then in print name, of course, I'm just gonna write first name. Now we have to modify this function a little bit instead of just taking in a const std string. Now we'll take in a string view no need to pass this by reference or anything like that. So this becomes just std string view name. So now with this in mind, let's run this program and see how many allocations we get. And check this out, we just get a single allocation coming from this original string, of course. Let's also copy and paste this and print the last name here. And then I'll just run this program. There we go, we print the first name and the last name and we only have a single allocation. How good is that? But we can do better than that. We can get rid of all of the allocations entirely. And the way that we can do that is by not using std string at all. So this is a static string. There's no real reason for it to be an std string. We could just make it a c string, a const char pointer. So now instead of this name.c string, we get rid of that entirely. The code becomes just that. And then if I do run this program, <sighs> look at that, isn't that beautiful? Zero allocations. Another thing to note here is that because I did change my print name function from being a string to a string view, that means that if I was to do something like I did before where I just write print name and then just an actual string here like this, this itself will also have no allocations. So if I run this program, you can see I get zero allocations. But if I go over here and I change this to be an std string like this, even though it is a const reference here, I'll get rid of these two because they're string views. You can see that just by printing name Cheno, I of course get one allocation. So even if you're not doing any kind of substring stuff, you know, all I wanna do is have this print name function, then I can take in a string view instead of a string just by changing the signature of the function like this. And suddenly I've gone from having one allocation to zero allocations. So in other words, to summarize. So we have two cases here, one which uses strings and one which uses string views. Let's put them head to head and see what the total difference is. So for this example, I will revert this name to being a string. Depends what the use case kind of is, but let's pretend that this data isn't just being statically typed like this in our C++ code. Maybe it's coming in from a file or being generated somehow. In that case, making it a string would just be a more realistic scenario, that's all. I'll change this code back so that it actually works. So we'll add the dot C string here to get the C string. And I will also write two versions of this function, one which doesn't use std string view like this, and one which does. And again, what I'll do is I'll put a little preprocessor if and else here just to make that happen. What I'll do is write if string view so that we use the string view way, and I'll do the same thing for here. Just flip these two around. There we go, so now we have our if string view and the else statement. I'll come over here and I will return our print names and I'll have three different examples, Cherno, first name and last name. So let's see what this looks like. So with string view turned off, I'm gonna run this program and you can see we get four memory allocations. Whereas if I go ahead and define string view, just like that, and I run this, we have just a single memory allocation, which of course is coming from that original string creation. So if you guys wanna take this further, what you can do is copy down the code that I've written today and actually benchmark it. Try and do it over like a thousand for loop iterations. Try and put it into your game loop or something like that. Try and look into your own existing projects and start replacing a few of these strings with string views and see what kind of performance impact you have. Me just speaking from experience, I know that if you look at pretty much any game and you profile it and you inspect it, a sizable portion of that will be due to string operations. And a lot of the times there's just not much you can do, but of course, there's always a little bit that you can probably get away with. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Let me know what you think about all of these kind of performance optimization videos. I love this kind of stuff. I love making this kind of stuff. So there'll definitely be more of this in the future. And as always, don't forget to put down any kind of requests you have for C++ videos in the comments below. I know my list is huge, but I'm, all, I'm always looking for new video ideas. Don't forget to check out that two month free trial of Skillshare by using the link in the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.